All right, let's do a problem where we have a car driving off a flat cliff for some reason. Action movie or something? I don't know. All right, here's my car. It's driving off a cliff like that. Uh, and I want to know if we know the height of the cliff is, say, uh, is that really a cliff? 20 meters? Whatever. Um, I want to know how fast it has to go in order to land in this river or something. And we'll know the distance to the river is uh, 10 meters. This is not a very big situation here. Uh, 50 meters? There we are. Okay, so let's find the velocity he has to go. This V up here. Maybe I'll call it V initial because it is the first velocity that's happening in the problem, I think. All right, well, <clears throat> with a little bit of thought, we can figure out that this is gonna be a kinematics problem um, because there is constant acceleration from the Earth, from gravity. And when there's constant acceleration, we generally use kinematics. So, uh, one thing that we should always add to our picture, though, is an axis, as in the xy axis. Uh, usually, oftentimes, a good way to, good place to put the xy axis is right up here. Um, but I think in this case, I'd rather put it down here. Okay, so this is the y, and this is the positive, positive y and positive x direction. I'd like to put it down here because it doesn't really matter either would work but if I put it if I put the origin up here then we end up going below uh, we end up with negative y values which seems a little odd so I'll go ahead and put the axis down here meaning that we'll always have positive values all right so uh, let's list out our knowns and unknowns well we have an x and y direction and there are distances in the x and y direction so I suppose I'm gonna have to list out um, both sets of variables. Uh, let's do it in the empty area over here. Okay, now what do we know? Well, we put our origin down here. So if the car is flying off the cliff, and maybe I should have drawn it a little bit more toward the end of the cliff here. It's flying off like that. Oops, whatever. Um, then its initial x coordinate is zero. See that? And its initial y is up at 20 meters. It's going to fly through the air, like so, through my equations, and kersploosh into the water, something like that. So the final y is down at zero. The final x is over at 50 meters, at least 50 meters to make it into the water, so we'll put it at 50. So this is the minimum velocity. We're going to find, I guess, the minimum velocity he needs to hit the water. Um, but he'll hit the water. Uh, so, what else have we got? Well, acceleration in the x direction is zero, right? Now, it may have been able to accelerate itself while it had its wheels were on the ground and driving, but once it's in the air, it's at the mercy of gravity, which only, of course, points down, and there's nothing accelerating it in the x direction. But gravity is accelerating it downward now since we said that up is the positive uh, that up is the positive y direction gravity points down so we have to put gravity into our equations as negative because it points in the negative direction uh, what else have we got here well we're curious about the initial velocity but we said that the cliff was flat so the initial velocity can only be in the x direction so this is actually the x initial in my picture, and that is what I'm curious about. The y initial, well, that's zero. Initially, it's moving straight in the x direction. It's not moving up or down. And we don't really know the final velocities, but that's all right. So I want the x initial. So ideally, I would just solve for it. Let's look over here. 
Now, looking at my equations, I know one, two, three things, and I don't know one, two, three things. Now, because I have a little experience with this, I know that I need to have four variables known, and then I can solve for the other two. So uh, we can't do this one yet. But looking at y, I know one, two, three, four of these. I could solve for the time it takes to hit the ground and then use that time over here in my x equation. Because of course, there's only the one time it's traveling for. The time it's falling through y and the time it's traveling sideways through x are the same thing. So if I can solve for t here, I can plug it in over here. So let's try and do that. Now we want an equation that uh, does not have the y final in it, but has the rest of these. That is going to be this one. Uh, v, uh, let's see, y equals y initial plus vy initial t plus one half a y t squared. We've got some zeros though. vy initial is zero, and y final is zero. So if I solve, let's see, what am I solving for? Time. Well, we'll rearrange this. Um, if we if we let's take a couple steps at once. If we move over. Uh, say the one half a y t squared, but we also plug in the fact that a y is negative g. We'll get this. Continuing to solve, we get that time is equal to the square root of two y initial over g. All right, so that's going to be our time. Now I can use that here. Square root of two y initial over g. Okay, and of course you could plug numbers in at this point. Uh, I shan't. But now we are looking for our vx initial. And once again we want the equation without the vx final in it. And that is the same equation but with x's this time. So x equals x initial plus vx initial t plus one half ax t squared. Acceleration in the x direction was zero x initial was zero, so we have that x is equal to vx initial times t, but our t is the square root of two y initial over g. Uh, solving this for vx initial, we have vx initial is equal to x times the square root of g over two y initial. Plugging in numbers, we get about 24.8 meters per second. So that is the speed the car needs to go to, to land 50 meters away from the base of the cliff, which puts it in the river, I guess, in my problem. So there we have it. We were not able to solve it with just one equation, the one that seemed most direct. We had to use two equations, like I think we've done before. Thank you.